think everybody who is interested in time to show up is here. If we can get started. Um, I'll introduce myself and my colleague first. Um, this is Mario Nolte, one of our field application engineers. Um, I'm Corne Beckers, I work in the marketing department. Um, I'm not an engineer myself, so my technical knowledge is not that like in depth, but that's also why one of the reasons why Mario is here. Um, so we're from China with Motion Control. Some people know us by by name, most people know us from the science step sticks. So we had a few visitors walking by and asking, hey, what are you guys doing? My name never heard of it, but then you know to say science steps like they most of the time um, realize that they have heard of us. Um, so what we do is we are motor and motion control experts and we um, transform digital information into physical motion. Not only for step models, but also for um, um, DC and uh, BLDC motors. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that a bit later. So, one of the reasons that a motion control company can exist is that a lot of people, a lot of companies have issues with motion control. They might not know exactly how to deal with it or how to. And get a smooth motion. So, what they would end up with is something like this. So, as you can see, smooth motion can be quite important because we don't want to lose any precious liquids. Um, especially here. Especially here, yeah. We've got different companies come help it. Um, yeah, so. One of the reasons is that um, these last few years, um, people are trying to develop more diverse products and applications with more specific needs, but at the same time, um, they don't really have the resources and expertise. It's just because of educations are becoming, um, yeah, how can I say it? It's more specified at certain points, so they don't really have an overall knowledge of how models work. And we also see a trend towards more and more software engineers um, who see motion control as something that just has to work as an external peripheral to what they really uh, focus on. Um, so we are there with our solutions to make sure that smooth motion and uh, um, yeah, basically make sure that the application works the way it should work and try to make it accessible to everyone. Um, yeah, so we take the digital information and translate it into physical motion. It's also one of the things that, um, like part of our background is that we are application driven and the founder, um, was working as a consultant for companies back in, I think it was around 94 or so. Um, and he saw that companies were struggling with the same problems, like different companies had the same problems. And he was um, programming software over and over again for different companies, but you know, making the same software. And he was thinking, why is not a hardware solution to this? And that's when he started to First microchip together with um, two other people. So the three of them developed the first microchip and sold it, and that became the foundation of um, motion control. Yeah. So here you can see the difference. Um, this shows the important, well, this shows S shaped ramps. Um, you have trapezoidal ramps. What you see a horse, so you basically have uh, acceleration until there's the target velocity, then it stays in that velocity and a deceleration. With S8 ramps, we have a smoother ramp, um, ramping profile um, by introducing a few, like, so you have um, trapezoidal ramp, which basically has 
the cloud frequency has cloud velocity and decreased. Then you have um, six point ranking, which adds three additional points of um, so three additional velocity profiles, and then acid ranking takes it a bit further for smooth motion. Um, yeah, as you might realize now, my this is more or less where my where my technical knowledge ends. So I'll leave it up to Mario to explain the rest. Yeah, well, like uh, we 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 just manufacture like uh, on our house to manufacture ICs. We also do some broad level products and um, some products. It's called like system package. Um, we call them motion cookies. And uh, well, here's a slide. Some of faces are sitting here, but these are like uh, well, some of the three really com printing companies which are already working with our products. And uh, we added this slide because uh, many people just know us from 3D printing or think that we are like just a 3D printing company or like a supplier for 3D printing, but we are actually doing way more. So, for example, security cameras like Pantel, wherever smooth motion is needed, medical lab automation, where you also want to have um, noiseless movements, especially like a syringe pump or anything is like connected to you on the body in the hospital and all well, the latest markets is drones. So, and, um, yes. well, we're not just a small company now based in Hamburg, we also have the um, office in FAEs in the US and in China and the development facility also in Estonia in Tallinn. Yeah, so in Tallinn it's mostly um, PCB design and custom boards. Um, like Mario said, in America and China we have field application engineers who work directly for Dynamics, so our colleagues who support the customer but also support our distributors and whenever we have a new product training them and making sure they know how to, how to explain it to potential new customers. So now a little bit more technical. So what are the main points or like which we faced and what challenges we faced in um, uh, 3D printing is um, that you need like a smooth motion, the best noises, um, reducing system costs. It's very important that what we learn. So like um, if everything or the whole system needs to be cheap. And um, the third one is, uh, or it's kind of coming up is um, also getting energy efficient. So um, for the first one, like where does the noise come from? So um, this shows more or less just the mechanical noise. So a stepper motor open loop behaves as a, a mass spring system. So if we do like big jumps like this, the motor will overshoot due to the force and oscillate to the point. You will hear that and you will also feel that. And you will hear it like, um, electronically and you will also hear um, the mechanics like vibrating, and this is not what you want to get. So the first step you can do to reduce this kind of mechanical noise is to do, use micro-stepping instead of full-stepping. So um, what we do here is um, we apply 256 times micro-stepping, um, which gives like a very, very smooth movement. But on the other hand, um, you need to apply 256 times higher step frequencies. Um, to the IC. And um, well, of course, like slow movements, this might be still possible, but as soon as you get like quick movements, the step frequency will get very, very high. And um, but to have both like a low step frequency but high output resolution, um, we have the feature it's called um, a micro plier. So we interpolate each micro step which comes in. So it says here from 16 micro steps to 256 micro steps. This is true for all of our products, but um, our later generations, they actually are able to um, interpolate even from full step or from you know, full step, half stepping, 32 times micro stepping. So from each micro stepping resolution to 256 times micro stepping. And um, this will give you in the end uh, more smooth and more um, precise movement. <coughs> but this is not everything what you can do to reduce noise in the system. Um, 
another option is um, to use a different chopping scheme. So in the main, or well, like also average competitor is using um, a, a current-based chopping mode. Um, you already see here, it's, it's a very nice sinusoidal form, but we still have some distortions on it. This is what you hear. And um, by moving on to a voltage control mode, um, which we call step job, you will have a way more <laughs> smooth sinusoidal waveform. And um, by having a fixed chopping frequency, which you can have outside of the audible range, as you, for example, do with brushes DC motors, you can completely avoid um, any audible noise so that the motor runs, it runs smoothly from a mechanical point of view, and it's also not hearable. To um, reduce system costs, um, one thing that we saw is like um, at least to get rid of the limit switches, um, you can use sensorless homing. Sensorless homing with our technology is working that way that we measure the backing map of the motor. By measuring the backing map, we can um, do like recognition where we know like where the load angle of the motor is. So as soon as there's load on the motor, it will spread up and um, up to a point where it starts losing steps. This is the 90 degrees. And this is exactly, this point is exactly the point when you hit an end stop. It will spread up to 90 degrees and then possibly like rotate a little bit if, if you keep moving. But um, we, we can measure this back EMF value with a precision of 10 bit resolution. So we can define like our value it can be like close to 90 degrees or a little bit before if you don't want to stress the mechanics. Um, you just simply detect this point, and at this point, you just stop the motion. And um, this is how you can home the 3D printer without needing um, additional um, sensors at the end. So, here it just shows the movement. So, you just drive, for example, to this side, and it will automatically stop, or like uh, depends on that direction, you get the signal back that this. Um, threshold is reached and then you can just stop the motion and you know like okay I'm at my position zero and you start printing from here. Um, here is a short video how it looks like then. The neck that uh, when you switch input on the control board the same way as the normal video switches are um, or, um, no, you, you don't need to connect them to or you, you don't need to connect them to limit switches. It's just censoring through the um uh, through the driver. Oh you, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just through the driver ship. Yeah, what you can do is like um well like uh or what do you mean with limit switches? Yeah, the, the signal from the driver ship uh, yeah. that's detecting the uh end stop. Yeah. Does that get feedback back to the control board somehow? Yeah. 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 You, you what you can do is like um of course you can use because it's giving, um, I don't know if it's like a going too low or too high, but you're yes. getting a pulse back, and you can, of course, connect this um, output from the IC yeah. and to your limit switch input yeah. of the um, controller mode. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's possible to do. And well, here it's just going to both ends and then stopping in the middle because we know like, the distance between both ends, and then we just simply stop. The next thing is like um, to reduce um, or to have more power options, um, is to use a closed loop system. And a closed loop system, on the first hand, it looks complex. You need maybe more calculating power in the um, MCU. You need to have bigger MCUs. You need to have an encoder. You need to take care of everything. Um, what we have is like a it's this motion control IC, it's the plain motion control IC, which is taking care of the real-time control. So it's offloading completely the MCU. And um, this can also be driven via SBI as an input, but also with step direction, so it can move forward. And um, it's taking care of this closed loop control. And um, 
this this has the benefit like um, on one end you, you can save energy but um, we learned like uh, from from other companies um, for example when it goes to medical it's very important that it has like some traceability so they need to have like a proof if for example they print in that orthopedic inlets for shoes they need to prove or like uh, have in a lock if someone sues them like i don't know my feet hurt now or you like i don't know destroyed my feet and they want to sue you so they can go back and say like okay this is the model that we should print for you and here's the lock file so we printed exactly what you wanted to have and um, it must come from different point of view why your feet are hurting now for example and um, this shows just like a very easy how a system could look like with this IC. So you have a small cortex M0. Um, it doesn't need to be um, a, a real time, so you could use also a smaller uh, microcontroller um, it, without any, um, um, you, you don't need to have like a clock input on the microcontroller, so you could use the internal clock. And um, well, of course, you need for the IC, you would need the clock to be like a real time critical, but um, everything is handled from the closed loop point of view for years. So the microcontroller is only needed to set up all of the parameters um, via SPI, so um, all of the closed loop parameters. And afterwards, um, the microcontroller like doesn't really have to do anything else. So it can be used for interfacing. Um, it can be used, for example, for calculating the um, motion profile for printing, um, but it does not have to do this um, closed loop control. And from the closed loop control, you, you just have the driver stage here, and the encoder feedback goes directly to the IC. And um, this is a system where you don't have to deal then in software anymore with it. And well, this is then just showing the uh, efficiency and also um, what you can see. So, restarting. So when, when you put load on the open loop one, you see it's nothing will happen. And um, here it's scaling the current actually like to, to be efficient. And also when you stop the motor or you apply too much force on it, it will stop and it will not lose the position. It will then catch up again as soon as overcomes the load condition. Well, that's it so far from our yeah. side. So I don't know if you have any questions regarding our products or the presentation, feel free to ask us. So uh, <clears throat> from a pretty point of view, Benefits for the drawbacks from uh, you talk of uh, the closed loop system, like uh, the cyber system, or with the uh, uh, stepper and motor system. What's your comment on that? To the choice or uh, um, depending on position and uh, yeah, it goes to phenomenon. Yeah, but it, it's kind of depends in the end um, what you need, like a closed loop system. The system cost for a closed loop system is of course more than to have an open loop system. So if you need to have um, traceability, um, then you kind of, you have no option more or less to go away from a closed loop system. Um, but or if you want to have like the most energy efficient system or like most reliable system, so for example, if, if someone grabs into the print and moves the print that way, and um, it would, of course, then snap back to the point where you lost the, the position information, so to say, or like where you stopped the, the printing, mm -hmm. and the print will not be wasted, or like it, it will not print on, on sideways. But if you um, have like a small printer where it's like, very cross uh, cost critical. You, you will design it in a way, in, in a low loop way, where you know that um, with normal a normal situation it will not stop. So you, you apply like maybe I don't know. You know if, if I drive it with one amp, um, everything will fine is fine. So to do in safe side, you apply like maybe 1.2 amps or 1.5 amps to the motors. Thank you. 
<laughs> Does this answer your question? Or yeah, it's probably. Yeah. Uh, I think that's fine, but uh, I guess it's for me. It's a matter of what I really want to use in there. And it's like a going process. Yeah. Like you want to use to create a shape. Yeah. Well, this is in this picture. This is still. This is also a stepper system. So um, it depends. Like in this, this with this system, you can really build like a cheap servo system. So you're using um, a magnetic encoder with magnetic encoder. And see, it costs like a the magnet costs. I don't know a few cents, mm -hmm. which you add on cost, and the encoder I see would. I don't know, cost like a few dollars. Yeah. And um, if you, for example, do like a, if, if you have the motor control for each motor on this PCB, so you don't even waste the PCB, which you need to do or would need to do for reading out the sensor data. So um, this, in this case, it's not so much of a cost at all. Yeah. Plus also by having the, um, the most control as a hardware peripheral, you can upload MCU, so you also can go for a for a more simple MCU that's you know, it's also saving cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thanks for input. With regards to uh, VLDC, I think you mentioned them very quickly at the start. Are there any plans or ideas to drive VLDC to a step in direction, thinking that we're reaching the limits of step drivers of a step mode at the moment and the 3D printers and VLDCs have a much higher, higher um, power to weight ratio? Is there anything currently available for that or any sorts of input data to the, the 3D printing work? Um, yes, it's like. Um... I think it's just a matter of time that it's available because it's 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 the product is ready. It just needs to go out to our distribution channels and to be available to the market. Um, we will have a it's a, it's a motion control IC. It's doing the field oriented control or what's called vector control algorithm. So you also have like a system like this. You can have a small MCU just parameterizing the IC and it's taking care of the closed loop control and it has also an it will have been, or it has a um, step and direction input for doing the position control. Thinking at the moment, the software side is all still working in step and direction. Yes, so it's very better to start with that. But yeah, vectorial might be better. Yeah, I think Any other questions? Are you making any kits like that? For mounting on a motor, you mean? Yeah. Um, yes, we have like uh, some um, off the shelf products. So it's like um, you can mount them on a motor, but you can also get them as it is, like with the motor yeah. together assembled. And in this case, um, we make sure that um, during assembly or after assembly, we're doing a test or we're testing all of our products. After assembly, but um, you know that the magnet is tied to to the motor, so it's you know if it's coming out of the box that it will be working, and you don't need to glue the magnet yourself and maybe adjust the piece of gear a little bit shifted because the signal is not quite right. Bit short maybe, but we hope you explain everything in a way that, that is understandable. Um, if you want to have more information, we always have like some white paper on our website, application notes. Um, on our blog, we have um, some reference designs like how to use our chips, which might be useful. Um, and so you can also do that for more information. And of course, you can also stop by our yeah. group and talk with us then. Yeah, so we have more results. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.